Now, another important pattern is the predator prey pattern. If any time you see in a graph something that looks like this, and sometimes they won't be together, you know, sometimes, let's say, for example, you were looking just at the hair population, and you may have seen, you know, a typical S curve, but then all of a sudden it starts doing this, because it starts going up and down like that. Now, you may not see the other side, but what's happening there, it's probably that you have a predator here. So you have a predator that's causing the thing to go up and down. So this graph is how we talked about it before, actually, when we did um, community ecology, and we talked about the relationships that exist between two populations. We're talking about the predator-prey relationship. It's the idea that as what prey becomes higher, I mean, so there's a lot amount, amount of prey, that means the more predator can eat. But if more predators can eat, their numbers will grow because there's more resources for them. So their carrying capacity suddenly goes up. That means that their numbers will explode and then there will be too many of them to eat the few amount of prey that's left. And so what's going to happen is that they will start starving. And remember, the number of prey at this point is going to start sinking. But the more the number of prey sinks, the more the predators will starve. And then the opposite will happen again. Because now you're going to have so few of, of the food that the predators will start to die off. And as the predators sink and die off because their carrying capacity went down, now all of a sudden the, the hares are just like, okay, nobody is eating us anymore, so their carrying capacity goes up because now the predation went down, right? So now their numbers explode. But now that their numbers explode, there's more food for the predators and the cycle restarts. So that's why you see these lines going up and down and crisscrossing. Every time the prey increases, the predator increases after. Every time the predator increases after, the prey decreases, but then the cycle restarts. So you, have, you see this crisscrossing among the predator and the prey. But notice the crisscrossing is not perfect. But that's because there's other things that could also affect the growth of each of their populations. It's not just the predation. It's not just the, pre the competition. There's going to be parasites. It's going to be disease. There's going to be waste, toxicity, intrinsic factors. There could be natural disasters. There could be a lot of times where the productivity of the ecosystem increases. And you have to remember that this is the whole food web that we're talking about, and we're only looking at two organisms within the food web. So it's a lot more complex than that than it really is. But I want you to know that whenever you see this crisscrossing pattern between two populations, it's because we call it a predator-prey relationship, and it's the fact that the carrying capacity between the two of them is constantly changing because of the change in the limiting factors that we discussed in the last video. And I also want you to know that if you see a graph of only one of them, you may see what it seems to be a growth that's like an S-curve that all of a sudden starts going up and down like this is because the current capacity is fluctuating. And it's usually because of a predator-prey relationship that something like that will actually happen. By the way, parasites could also cause a similar effect where it also limits the size of the population because the parasite may not necessarily kill its host, but it will decrease the ability of the host to do its uh, job because the parasite is stealing energy from the host. So you will see also sometimes this crisscrossing up and down because the parasite becomes a limiting factor. So the same kind of thing that you see in a predator-prey relationship will see, sometimes happen because of a parasite, except that the, the death numbers will not be as, as, as large. But remember, if, if the parasite inadvertently reduces the fitness of its host, it ends up causing the population numbers of the host to go down, that also hurts the parasites, so the parasite numbers will also go down. So that's why you have a similar relationship to what happens to the predator and prey with the parasite-host relationship, uh, it's, except that uh, the numbers don't fluctuate as much as they do in predator-prey relationships. So it's another example of how another graph uh, pattern that you will sometimes see.